Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. For anyone that's new here, my name's Owen Alec, and on this channel I do everything drum related that includes drum covers, tutorials, gear reviews, tips and advice just like this one. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, then please do consider subscribing, hit the like button, all that good stuff because it really helps the channel. Thank you very much. So today in this video, I'm going to be giving away five drumming secrets. Now these are things that a lot of drummers might not know about. They should do, but it's little things that are going to be making your life a lot easier. So let's kick this off with tip number one. Now most of the time when it comes to tuning your toms, a lot of people just tend to do the top heads and they, they kind of neglect the bottom heads, but what they don't realize is that the bottom heads are what's giving you a lot of that tone, a lot of that sustain. So a great way of getting a great tom sound is to manipulate that bottom head. So if you want it to pitch bend downwards, so you're kind of going a boom sort of sound, then you'll tune the bottom head lower than the top head. Equally, if you wanted it going pitch bending up like a boom, which I'm not really sure a lot of people do, but if you wanted that, then you can do that by tuning the bottom head higher than the top head. Or if you wanted a consistent sound throughout, then you'll pitch match them both. Personally, I like to have an ever so slight pitch bend downwards, nothing too drastic, but I like to try and get them almost kind of sounding the same, and then I'll just take the bottom head down just a smidge. Tip number two is to have a really good communication with the sound engineer. Not only is this guy responsible for your sound, he's also responsible for the setup of the actual stage. So if you've got a lot of gear, either you've got a lot of toms, a lot of cymbals, or you're running in-ear monitors, or you've got a sample pad, uh, anything like that, it's really good to have a communication with the sound engineer before the gig. That way the sound engineer is not gonna be panicking about having the, the right type of leads or the right amount of leads, anything like that. He can focus on doing his job. Also, it's just gonna create a much better atmosphere when it comes to working with the engineer and also for the entire night. Also, if you were to work with that engineer again in the future, you understand their job and their role that they have to play, and you're putting forward information that helps them and then in turn helps you. Tip number three is something that a lot of my customers come to me about, and typically it is this one little thing that can save their entire snare sound, and this is just cranking up the bottom head. I've talked to quite a lot of drummers over the years, not just beginners, but people who've been playing for quite some years, either in the studio or doing live gigs, and they don't really understand the role that the bottom head plays. Essentially, the bottom head is what gives you that snap on a snare, and if it's too low, it's just gonna sound soggy and ripply and wet, and it's just not gonna sound nice at all. You want it super crisp, you want it sharp and snappy. So the best way to get that is to really crank up that bottom head, almost to a point where you feel like it's gonna snap. And believe me, I've cranked up some of my snares before, like my 13 by seven brass snare that I've got from VK. I've tuned that up so high before, and it just keeps coming back for more. Now, mostly this is gonna be down to the quality of the actual head itself. I mean, you don't wanna get some crappy no brand one that could potentially just snap at any time. You're gonna to wanna to go with something like Evans or Remo or Aquarian but cranking up the bottom head is the best way to get the best sound. You could have the top head being perfectly pitch matched and it's at the right kind of tone that you're after, but the snare sounds still terrible. Try cranking up that bottom head really, really high and I promise you it'll solve a lot of issues. Tip number four is to have backups. Now I know that that's easier said than done when it comes to things like cymbals or drums or snares because they're very expensive. But if you can have a spare snare at the side of you, that if something goes wrong with your main one, you can swap out dead, dead easy. Alternative to that is having a spare drum head that you can just have it sat at the side so that if yours goes through, you can just take it off dead easy, whip the other one back on, get it all sorted out, and it'll hopefully it'll only take you a few minutes in the middle of a set. It's not ideal, but it's better than it going through and having no backups whatsoever. This is also true for things like sticks because you're gonna break sticks on stage all the time. So having some spares at the side of you that you can just quickly grab hold of and carry on playing, and hopefully it won't break your rhythm too much, but it's vital to have these extra backups, I promise. Of course, this is all extra gear that you gotta bring, extra load-ins and extra weight and all that kind of stuff. So be choosy with what you bring, but backups are a must. Now lastly, tip number five is something that I've been suffering with since I was a teenager, since I started playing live and I still suffer with it today. This is performance anxiety. Now, everyone gets a little bit nervous before they go on stage, that's perfectly natural. But unfortunately, sometimes it gets a little bit to the point where you start feeling sick and you, your anxiety is going so bad that you just wanna leave. You don't wanna do the gig and you just wanna leave. But you know as soon as you get on stage or as soon as you've done the gig, you'll feel great. 
So a really effective way of reducing the anxiety is a technique that I actually got from a friend of mine called Stephen Hadley. He's a sports massage therapist and all around gentleman. And he showed me this technique where you lie on your back and you put either a, a cushion or your jacket or something rolled up underneath your shoulder blades and it stretches out all of this sense of muscle that you've got coming down your sternum um, towards your diaphragm. It stretches all that out and you'd be surprised just how much of your anxiety lies in this area. Because when you get anxious or something like that, you kind of start curling up and you start feeling even worse. This is your body's reaction to feeling nervous and feeling anxious. So being able to stretch that out, it just melts away your anxiety. It hurts at first, I'm not gonna lie. When you're lying there and this is all being stretched out, it hurts for, but just stay there for a few minutes and maybe move up the, whatever is underneath your, your, your jacket or your cushion or whatever it might be, so that it keeps stretching it out. And eventually when you stand up again, I promise you, your anxiety melts away, you'll be able to breathe better, you feel a bit taller, and just all around you feel calmer. This is a technique that I've been using for years and I promise you it works. It's super simple and you can do it pretty much anywhere. As long as you've got enough space to kind of lie down, I promise you it works. But that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys have got something out of it. Let me know in the comment sections below. Thanks again and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.